Hello, everybody. This is Sarah from Above the Tree Line. Um, thanks for your interest in our topic today, Edelweiss 360 for bookstores. We're really excited about this new tool and we're pretty happy to present on it at Winter Institute recently. I have John Rubin, our founder and CEO, on with me today, and he's going to cover what Edelweiss 360 is, what it allows stores to do, as well as some of our early findings from our, our, our beta tests. While he's talking, though, if you have any questions, feel free to enter them into the chat or the Q&A. I'm going to keep an eye on it. I'll see them no matter where you put them. Um, if I can, I'll answer them right away. Uh, some of them we might, you know, have John answer at the end or even throughout the presentation. Um, and if for some reason we don't get to it, we will reach out to you afterwards. Or if you have questions after the fact, feel free to reach out to us. You can email us anytime at support at above the tree line .com with questions about Edelweiss 360 or anything Edelweiss related. So uh, with that, I'm going to stop talking and pass it over to John. Great. Uh, well, thanks, Sarah. And welcome everybody who's listening. And I know there are others that will get a recording of this. Um, uh, so I'm John Rubin, uh, the, the, the founder and CEO of Above the Tree Line. I started Above the Tree Line, wow, a long time ago now. I guess it was back in 2002, 2003, uh, how time flies. Um, and uh, uh, and so, so yeah, so this is a replay of, of Winter Institute. I think a little better because you'll actually see the screen better than people were able to see it at Winter Institute. Uh, and see and see me less. Um, so I think that should be a, a, a good thing all in all. Um, so so yeah, so Edelweiss 360 um, is really our our third product. Um, we had Edelweiss Analytics is what we started with back in 2002, 2003. We started Edelweiss in 2008, 2009, and this is an extension of it um, that uh, that, as Sarah mentioned, we're really excited about and uh, and is evolving. So uh, I'll walk you through the the genesis of the idea, where it is, and what it is, and and where we see it going. Um, let me check this just before and sure enough. Okay, good. Uh, the PowerPoint can move along. I'll try to, uh, um, I, I will do a little bit of PowerPoint, which I was just reading an article that talked about how bad PowerPoint is. So a couple pages of PowerPoint and then we'll go into the demo, which is the more interesting stuff anyway. Um, but we'll talk a little bit about introducing the concepts, uh, as, as I mentioned, and talk about where we are. I'll demo uh, the two aspects of it, which we'll talk about a bunch, which is the bookseller interface um, and then the custom customer mobile experience that really goes hand in hand with it. Um, and then we'll talk at the end about some results from uh, the beta test and in particular Northshire. So Chris Morrow uh, did four uh, campaigns as we call them in Edelweiss 360 and we'll, um, and we'll talk about the results of those. So uh, Edelweiss 360, I mentioned that it's our third big product uh, and it really, uh, it's differentiated from the other two because it's the first one of ours that I really look at as really focused on helping indies uh, increase revenue. So analytics and Edelweiss do that to a certain extent, but it's a little bit more about just making things more efficient, uh, improving existing processes, helping you manage your inventory better, which, you know, of course, better inventory can lead to better, better revenue. Um, but this is really focused on trying to, as it mentions in the second point there, increase the volume and share of your customers' purchases. Um, I won't talk a lot about the other things out there. There's a lot of noise of all these cool new things, which is really great for the indie market. Um, but, but I think this point is kind of key differentiating from say Bookshop, uh, which is really more about kind of trying to get funnel customers that are looking on the internet to indies or to give indies a share of those purchases. Edelweiss 360 really comes at it from completely the other direction, which is a tool that you can use, uh, that you can efficiently use to help grow your customer base. And you'll see there's a big component about loyalty programs or membership rewards programs, um, but it's, it's, it's all about your brand with Edelweiss 360 and, and, and kind of reaching out to customers on their mobile device or via email, um, that type of thing. There's an element of it which is, uh, I mentioned there, lighten the load on your point of sale system. So we pull information and additional feed from point of sale systems um, than we already do for Treeline Analytics, but we can also pull from Eventbrite, 
We can pull from your email lists and constant contact and MailChimp. So pulling different information in, um, but uh, but sort of you know some of the, some of those functions that are in the point of sale systems, but just you know are partly in the point of sale system, partly in MailChimp or Constant Contact, partly in other systems. The whole idea, or, or one of the big parts of Edelweiss 360, is uh, is to integrate all of that. So uh, to do some of these tasks, um, you can do them a lot shorter, a lot more efficiently than you would be able to do them now. Um, we're envisioning this as an add-on to TreeLine Analytics. Um, we have 355 indie subscribers to TreeLine Analytics <laughs> that have come on in the last, what is that, eight, 17, 18 years. Um, if you don't know what that is, you know, quickly we pull daily point of sale data um, and we help indies look at that information, compare it to others, see what's selling well elsewhere, et cetera. Um, we're envisioning this as an add-on to that. Um, and and we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that as we go. Um, I won't go through each of these different elements, but there are, uh, there are different aspects to this. There's a targeted email is the big part of it, but it also is a loyalty program management uh, tool. There's a way of integrating your staff picks, um, et cetera. So we'll, we'll get into that. Um, Quickly on the timeline, um, it was perfect at Winter Institute when I presented this because it was exactly a year uh, before that that the concept started. Um, the idea came from a conversation I had with Nicole at the Bookworm of Edwards uh, in Colorado. Um, and Nicole and I were talking and she was saying that, you know, one of the things that Amazon can do <laughs> is proactively send emails out to customers 24-7 um, with recommendations, and and it's just very difficult uh, for indies to do. Um, and so we were talking about if there's a way that we could build that into Edelweiss or has what what's evolved into 360, and that's sort of a core part of what of what I'll show you. Um, you know, there, there's the, you can think what you want about the emails that Amazon might send out to people, but there's a lot of research about how incredibly valuable and successful it is. There are lots of stats out there about how much of Amazon's revenue comes from those emails, comes from those quote personalized recommendations, which frankly probably are not that personalized. Um, so uh, so it's a concept that that works. Um, and, and I'll be referring to it a lot as targeted marketing as opposed to um, I don't even know really the good term for the opposite, but it's just kind of a general email blast out to your mailing list. Um, but a targeted marketing blast, the concept is you're sending cookbooks to people who like cookbooks. Um, and, and that's the idea um, uh, behind uh, uh, that part of 360. So um, after after talking about the call and coming up with that idea and continuing to work through, we had a, a series of months where we were just vetting the idea and seeing the interest. So we presented to a number of ABA groups, the Technology Task Force, the um, Bookseller Advisory Council, the ABA Board, and we kept getting really positive responses, um, which obviously is a, is a good thing for um, or a good indicator that we should keep on doing what we're doing. Um, the response that we just got at Winter Institute was also really positive, so, so that keeps on happening. Um, but I, it was around April, May that we started the initial development as we were um, doing this. The way, if you've worked with us before, the way we like to build things is, is put it out there, get ideas, continue to evolve it, and, and that's really where we are right now. So we started a beta test of the system end of October, which we knew was not a great time uh, to do it, getting into the holidays, but we had a few stores, uh, we had a number of stores that said they want to be part of it, um, and a few of those were able to engage before the holidays, um, and and we really actually made some pretty significant changes to how we we do things. So um, so that's where we are right now, where the plan is to continue beta testing um, and have a full rollout, um, and you know, Again, as I as I think I alluded to, we're we're going to continue to evolve it over time as we keep doing it, but a full rollout by Book Expo. Whoop! I went ahead. So, two primary components to it, um, and and every time we kind of think one of these uh, 
takes precedence or, or becomes more key than the other, we're kind of reminded that they're linked together. Um, and so I'll be showing both of these. We're much further along on the beta testing on the first one, which is that system to build targeted emails. So, um, uh, so this is being able to take your customer list and uh, and create a email that is, let's say, I'll, I'll come back to it because that's the example I'll use later, a cookbook themed email, send it to your cookbook customers um, and then be able to track what's happened with it, clicks, opens, and also who bought. Um, so all of that through there, um, but then also a, a, a corresponding mobile experience. And again, we kind of have gone into the various presentations by saying we could have one or the other. And invariably we find people who you know, there's some spectrum where pe some people are more excited about the first one, some people are more excited but about the second one, but a lot of people see them kind of coming together. Um, and so this is a mobile experience. If you think about it just at its simplest level, it's when you send somebody a targeted email, you want to give them a place to be able to go and say, this was a good recommendation, this was a bad recommendation, here's what I really like. That's that's kind of the core of that. Um, but but since, um, and we sort of say this in a funny way, since Amazon bought Goodreads in whenever that was, 2012, 2013, and we started to build the community functions into Edelweiss, we've always had the idea that wouldn't it be great to offer the indies the ability to build those communities um, within a within a service as well, and 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 so we've kind of rolled that into this as, as well. So as long as uh, um, as well as somebody coming in and being able to say, here's what I like, here's what I don't like, see their purchases, review, rate, see what others in the community. Um, and the neat thing as I'll talk to, and, and you'll hear me keep say this throughout here, is about efficiency and saving you time, is there are a lot of components of what you already do in analytics and what you do in Edelweiss that can feed this experience. So if you have your staff write reviews in Edelweiss, those can feed in here. If you send us your analytics data with your sections, we can display here is your poetry section organized by the top sellers or what you're ordering. So there's some really neat kind of things that we can do with that and that I'll walk through. Um, but I'll start with the system to build the targeted emails. And, and again, this is really what we've been focusing more on the beta. Um, it's more clear cut. Uh, we really think sort of the value here um, can be realized more quickly and right off the bat. Um, and really the key to it is this all-in-one solution. So, so we do get an additional feed from um, the point of sale systems that you work with. And we have those working for most of the systems. There are a couple of the big systems that we're very close to being able to get those, but they work the same way as the tree line inventory feeds where once they're set up, you don't have to worry about them. Um, and what's fed over to us is customer information and data about what people bought. Um, because what we're trying to do in this system is combine it into all into one where you can pick the titles you want to market, the events you want to market. Um, you can decide who you want those to go to um, very easily. So that's what this little screen over here is that I'll show you in the demo. But I can say I want to send um, a, a cookbook theme campaign to the people who bought cookbooks or the people who bought X many cookbooks in the last Y months or the people who bought the comps of those. So, so letting you refine those lists and then probably one of the biggest time savings is you don't have to take that list out into Constant Contact or MailChimp um, and grab the jacket covers from Edelweiss or wherever else you might grab them. You do that all in the system. Um, so right now we have one template, but we'll, I'm sure we'll be adding more where um, it's your brand, it's your logo, you can write a message, you can create a little image splash. Um, and then you'll just sort of see it here and I'll show you some more examples of this where it's you know very simple with the jacket covers or the picture of the author for the event, that type of thing. So a key to it is this, it's a few minutes to create, um, target, customize and send. Um, and that's really important because this, what we're hoping and, and we really think that this can be is it evolves to a different kind of email. It's, it's not just your monthly newsletter or even your weekly newsletter. You can really send these on a much more frequent and say, hey, here are some um, co cookbooks or here are some history books that are coming out that we're really excited about. Let's just send it to a smaller set of our customers who either based on purchases or what they've started to tell us or we know them, um, they'll be more interested in. So, so you can send these out a little more frequently if you're sending 
um, you can send out more frequently and you can send it more targeted if you're if uh, if it's these narrowed lists. Um, the other big part of this is that in addition to um, the open rates and the click rates that something like a MailChimp or Constant Contact can show you, um, the neat thing is we can actually show you who bought. Because we're getting that feed of customers coming in, whether they've bought online or whether they've bought in the store, and when you've asked them, are you part of our loyalty program or whatever you might call it, um, and they say yes, we get that feed so we know that that person who got that email that suggested Heirloom Kitchen bought it three days later. So we report back to you a conversion, um, which is what that is. And what we're calling the halo, and I'll, I'll, you don't have to remember this, I'll come back to it, is any other purchases that were bought that same day. So um, it's not that, the, that, you know, it happened purely because of this system, but, but, but it helped. So if, if someone came in and they got that email and they bought that title and they bought a few other books while they were there, that's the halo. Um, so, so, you know, the, the, the key to it is, um, you'll be able to see if it's working or not. Um, you also can see on subscribe rates. So, you know, if, if you're sending too much or you're sending the wrong kinds of, of emails. Um, so the mobile experience, uh, so I mentioned that this is, uh, we, we've started on this. We haven't rolled it out as fully. Um, what we've rolled out at this point are kind of the major interfaces from those emails. So I want to click in and certainly be able to unsubscribe, but from the email, I also want people to be able to let me know their their favorite titles, their favorite sections. Um, but again, the idea behind this is, 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 I think there's a great opportunity to go where the customer is. Um, also, emails, there's a lot of email marketing out there. So it's great, the more targeted you are with it, the better. Um, but there's a lot of noise, um, great email open rates, which I think we've seen some are, you know, 40, 45%, um, but that's still 50, 55% that could be interested that don't open those emails. Um, you know, this one stat, which I just think is fascinating is, you know, the average, I don't know, what is it, US uh, adult, maybe it's a kid too, three and a half hours a day on their phone. So, um, whether it's a uh, it's a it's a really nice um, mobile web page or it's actually a native app, um, being able to have a nice interface and people can go to and see things like let me look at your um, your general fiction section or let me see my purchases or let me see where I am on my loyalty account. Um, the word I'm looking for, you know, my how many more purchases I need to make till I get my reward. Some of those kinds of things. Um, we're building in there. Um, so yeah, so we talked there, refining the profile, adding shelves, some of the things that are in Edelweiss, staff picks, loyalty status. Um, but a key to this whole thing, again, on this side as well as the email side, is having it be something that's easy to maintain. So when we've brought stores on, we can essentially populate this mobile site without the stores having to do anything because we have the inventory, the, the, the shelves from Booklog or Basil or Anthology or Ibit or whatever point of sale system you have. Um, we have the staff picks if they're in there. Um, so there's a lot of information that we can get from, uh, from Edelweiss and Analytics that, that makes it easier to maintain uh, this as well. So hopefully this is making sense. Uh, it's always funny in these to not have kind of the, a, a reaction, but uh, but I'll keep on going. Um, third component to this, um, and and this uh, I think could be a little controversial, but I think the way that we're doing it um, makes it so that it's not. Um, but we've really looked at how can we. One of the problems out there is that the publishers don't have a face, let's say, to be able to work with indies on an efficient basis on marketing, and they spend most of their marketing dollars with Amazon. Um, and so what we're looking at, the, and they and they do direct to customers. And so those two kinds of things are part of what we're trying to say with 360 is can we have, build a system where the indies work cooperatively with publishers, where one, you own the experience, you own the customers, the publishers don't ever see emails, but essentially they can make offers through the system. And we're still talking about the ways that that can work. Um, they make offers where if you include those titles in your emails out, um, there's a affiliate fee, 
uh, rebate, co-op, whatever you want to call it. I think it's kind of something different. Um, and, and we're actually trying to, we're, we're talking with the, the consumer marketing people at publishers rather than the, the co-op people, because we really look at this as more of a consumer marketing experience. So, you know, a couple things on one, you know, compensate indies for the showroom function, um, but then also just using this as an opportunity to talk to publishers about whether there are ways that we can make this whole experience better. Um, you know, if, for example, you want to offer delivery, home delivery, if that's something that publishers could subsidize or promotional rebates through there, or um, some of the publishers have rolled out loyalty programs. Could those be something that are integrated right in the system so that, uh, you know, if there's a 20% discount for somebody who's part of a publisher's loyalty program, that's reflected in the price that you're showing them. Um, so those types of things. But again, uh, you it's all kind of through the bookstores rather than um, than around the bookstores. So we're having those conversations with publishers about sort of different ways that that can work. So um, I'll walk you through a demo, uh, which is more interesting, I think, than hearing me talk. First, we'll start with the bookstore interface, um, and then we'll look at the, the mobile experience. Um, in terms of the bookstore interface, yeah, lots of campaigns possible, and I think, you know, we're just kind of starting to scratch the surface of how the different types of campaigns stores can use, but certainly events, local interest title, pre-order campaigns. Um, because it's so easy to send these, we think, you know, you could conceivably um, send one to an individual if you want to, um, but we're going to start by creating a cookbook campaign. So first I'm going to jump over here um, to, yes, a web page. Um, so uh, different ways you may, you, you'd want to approach it, um, but the first might be, I'm browsing an Edelweiss catalog during a buy, um, and I have over on the right, the ability to add it to a campaign. So you don't need to, um, but if you're saying this would be a good one that I want to send out, for example, to my people who are interested in cookbooks, probably if it's Edelweiss, it's a, it's a pre-order, um, but it doesn't have to be. Um, but it's very simple to come right here and either add it to an existing campaign, and I'll talk and we'll see where these are, or I could just come in here very quickly and say, I want to create a new cookbook campaign. Um, and now I have this title part of a cookbook campaign. So um, you could, again, do this as you're walking through um, a, a buy in Edelweiss. You could also, as you'll see, add these to a collection, tag them, and access the books that way. But again, just in terms of simplicity, um, you know, you may, you, this might be a nice way to go through and kind of catch the books that you want to send out proactively to the people who you think would be interested in them, your customers. So um, to get to the uh, Edelweiss 360 area, if you're, uh, if, if you're active in the beta or beyond that, you can click on the little Edelweiss 360 logo. And this is the interface for, um, for Edelweiss 360 for the booksellers. So over here on the left, I can see, so this would be your logo. Um, here's where I can see the, the customers that I brought in. So again, this comes in from, um, from your point of sale system and we're, we're working right now on getting Eventbrite data in there and then just people being able to import uh, a list of email addresses here. What this with detail means is these are customers with sales transactions. So these are customers that are part of, again, whatever, you're call, whatever you call it, a loyalty program or a membership or friends, um, whatever that might be, this is the data that traditionally we've gotten from the point of sale systems and set up that additional feed. So here you'll see what this is saying is that in our demo bookstore, um, we have 9,500 customers with that sales transaction detail and most of those we have email addresses or all of those. Um, what we found, you know, as we're going in here is obviously this varies a lot. A lot of stores haven't collected this information. Um, I, I've talked to a number of stores that haven't collected it because there hasn't been really a lot to do with it. So, um, so you know, you you could start if this is of interest. You could start a program where you uh, you start collecting that uh, information. Other stores have collected phone numbers. You can start collecting email addresses. Um, you can also come up on top here and see, you know, uh, how recently we've imported the data. Again, this should be as of yesterday for a store that's on here. 
Um, but I'm going to just jump right to the, the campaign where we were before. So we started that cookbook uh, campaign, and you see it right here. So campaign builder, here's a cookbook. We've got one item on it. Um, and I can click right in here, and it's a very simple interface to say, what do you want to add to this cookbook campaign in terms of what items? So you can, this is basically what we want to market. Uh, titles, events, collections, um, and I can just come right in here. This searches your inventory. Um, you can input your events in here, um, or you could send a collection out, So, you know, which I'll show you for this cookbook campaign. Um, and then we can also come in here and add customers using different filters. Um, but I'm, but probably one title here isn't enough for this. It could be for a different campaign. For this one, we want to add a few more. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go to a view of this store's cooking section. So um, again, this is one of those areas where we bring in all of this data for analytics. So we have, uh, if you're an analytics customer, your different sections by how you categorize them. Um, and then you'll see a couple lanes here. So I've got most ordered, not yet published titles. So um, organized by uh, your what you've placed on order. So again, back to sort of these two different approaches, I can either as I'm going through my catalog do this, or afterwards I could say, here's what, I end, what I've ordered um, and so I can look at that. Here's what I have the most copies of stock in stock on. So this could be just you're the most excited about it. It could be you had an event and you've got extra copies. It's a good book, but you want to market those titles out. Um, or it could just be something that you want to, you know, we don't want to return all these. We think it's good. So we're going to include that on the list. Um, then you also have best selling titles that you can pick from. Um, that also show you whether you have it in stock. And then lastly, and there aren't any here, if your staff has reviewed anything. So essentially, this is a way of just looking at identifying titles you might want to include in a campaign. Um, and you can do this at whatever level your sections are. So this is this store's sections where you can see, you know, there, um, there's cookbooks, there's history, there's humor, um, however you have them categorized in your store. Um, but it's very easy again to come here and just say, I want to come here, I want to look at this title, um, and I'm going to add it to that same campaign that I created. So now I've got that title there, and now maybe I want to add a couple um, recently published, nope, that one's a little longer, but um, already published titles, and add these to the campaign as well. Um, so now, when I come back to the main page here and look at my cookbook campaign, I now have those four items on it. Um, if I wanted to, I could also add a collection. So, um, and huh, imagine that um, I set this up beforehand. So this is an Edelweiss collection. I created one called Best Selling Cookbooks. Um, this is kind of the way it actually will appear to the customers as well with these neat little jacket covers. Um, so I can click here and I can say, I wanna add this campaign to my or this collection to my cookbook campaign as well um, and I could do the same thing with events I don't actually have a cookbook themed event we've got kind of random ones here um, but maybe the Mars interest group has some overlap with cooking <laughs> a bit of humor um, and uh, so now I come back here and now this is my um, my list what's of, of what's in here uh, this is kind of some of, I think, the neat magic where it's not then going to Constant Contact or MailChimp, but it's right within here being able to preview um, this email. Um, so this is what it looks like in sort of the base level where it's your logo. You can adjust all these, all this text to say what you want to, but it's very simple, um, focused on the images as much as possible. So jacket covers. Um, you can see that it does make the distinction between pre-order um, for not yet published stuff. Um, here's the collection. Um, and uh, and actually, there's, we also have the jacket cover there, so I'm not sure why that one didn't show up there. Um, what you can do right now, especially, is just link this right to your indie commerce site if you use that, or any e-commerce site or any site you want to link it to. Um, so you can uh, essentially just kind of add a convention where in the preferences you can say, here's my website address for 
uh, Indie Commerce, and the program will basically know this ISBN and we'll link it to that. Um, so that's what the stores and the beta have been doing is just linking right to Indie Commerce and, and they go from there. Um, so the second part, so that's what the email looks like. Uh, the second part would be deciding which customers you want it to go to. So if you click here, uh, it defaults to targeted, but you could just say, send this to everybody. So if you wanna make this a more of a traditional blast, um, you do have the option to send it out to all your active customers with email addresses who haven't unsubscribed. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be uh, <laughs> more, uh, more creative and um, come here and, oh, interesting, why, let me see if I switch it there. Okay, yes. Uh, so I'm gonna do uh, what I've talked about doing a bunch of times is I'm gonna say, I wanna send this to people who bought our, within our cooking section. Um, so this is just our demo store. Obviously the counts here will, will vary a lot. Um, so this is anybody who purchased one or more titles in the last 24 months. If I wanna refine that, I can. I can change the number of months. I can change the minimum number of titles and you'll see that brings it down to 92. Um, I can always come right in here and actually see your customers. Um, this is just the demo store uh, where I can look and if I if there's an individual customer that I know I don't want to receive things, um, one is you can just turn, you can just basically say never send something to this person or for this particular email, I can uncheck them. Um, I could also say here, um, I can tag people, which we wouldn't start with, but over time, if you if you know customers and tag them, you can send these campaigns to tags. You can pick individual customers if you wanted to. You can pick individual titles, or you can say anybody who's purchased a comp. So um, this leverages the comps in Edelweiss. There's sort of a nice interface in here, nicer than an Edelweiss to add or remove those comps because, um, I know what people talk about with comps. What, what's kind of interesting, I won't go off on this too much, is I actually think this is kind of a, oftentimes the complaints that we hear about comps is that maybe publishers are a little aspirational in the comps they, cho they choose for this purpose, um, you know, for, 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 well, I should say for the first purpose of what you use them for traditionally, which is to help you decide how many of a title to buy, that's an issue. For this, it's actually kind of a nice thing because this is much more of a, if somebody was interested in this book, then they might be interested in this one. So, um, so some some of that negative, I think, is is less negative when it comes to comps here. Um, so now you see it's up to 97. Um, and then this is actually really kind of a a key one as well. I think as people start using this tool more and more, is you can say, I, I want to make sure I'm not blasting people all the time because this is a little bit more. Um, uncertain as to who get what. You know, you could have somebody who's bought cookbooks, they've also bought history books, they've they've bought a lot, is you can kind of prioritize your campaigns and say, um, you know, I'm gonna do a cookbook campaign and a history campaign, but I wanna make sure that nobody who gets that, nobody gets two emails, let's say, in the same day or, um, or, or you know, within a couple days. And you can set that parameter of how long it is. But if you send this, and you, you set this preference, then these 97 people will not get an email for at least seven days, even if you send a history campaign or another one the next day. So it kind of controls the, um, the volume at which people um, receive these emails. Um, so if I come back in here, just to show you, I need to type a little subject line here. Great cookbooks. Um, I can actually edit a message as well, where I can say hi and actually insert the first name of the person. Um, you know, here are some of our favorites. Um, uh, I, I don't have the creativity right now to, uh, so um, save it. Um, you can format it, so right now it just looks like that, but you can make the font bigger and you can highlight things, but it pops in here. This is where I mentioned you can change the header set headers. Um, you can add a splash image. So if you if you want your store logo to appear across the top or the image of the store, not just the logo, or you wanna have, I know some stores do kind of creatively, they do a different 
splash image with each email they send, you can insert that and it shows up right here between your logo and the, um, and the name. Um, and then you can see right here, you can either send yourself a preview email to take a look at it, you can schedule to send it later. Um, so you can basically say, I want this to go out tomorrow at a certain time or in a week, um, or you can send it right away. Once you send a campaign, um, this is some more magic here where this is a, you know, a small uh, uh, test, um, but this is where you can quickly come and you can see here's how many it's sent to, here's how many were delivered, here's how many were, what the percentage open rate, the click rate, um, the halos that I talked about, which are the, well, let me start with conversions. Conversions are the, you know, I included Wild Robot in that campaign for those 97 people. Let's imagine those were the 97. Um, and five of those people bought Wild Robot, that would be five conversions. Um, and then Halo are those people on the same day, they bought another 10 um, different books. So, um, so you can kind of gauge that as well. Um, and then you can also see unsubscribes here. Um, we'll probably be building out the ability to, to do that even more. So um, I think that's kind of, you know, the, the quick and dirty of the system. There's a lot more in terms of being able to search for customer lists and tag people based on that, you know, who bought what, um, what sections, people who are tagged, see people who are subscribed or unsubscribed. Um, you can come and you can see a list of here's all the emails that sent. Let me see it by individuals who's bought and who hasn't. Um, you can also come and see your sections here and, and rename them or view them by department or jump in and see it. But, but hopefully that gives you an idea of, of, um, of what we're trying to do on the email side of it. So um, now I'm going to jump over to, uh, uh, to, to show you what we're thinking about in terms of this mobile interface. So um, again, the idea is, as I mentioned, is this is a, uh, a modern interface that's designed to engage customers. So not just be a place where they can go, but to actually engage them um, in a way that maybe book re uh, Goodreads does, or you know, at a minimum things like being able to show them their rewards rather than have them having to see it on their receipts after they buy something. Um, right now, we're designing this as a, and, and this is actually the, the web page, just sort of how it would look, just kind of embedded in this frame. Um, this is a mobile uh, friendly web page, um, but we're building it so that if it, if it works, we can, the idea would be to have a, what's called a native app, which would be something that people could download from the app store or from the Android store, um, branded to you. So, uh, you know, this is Literati, which is our store down the street from us. Um, and, and what's kind of neat is I'll show you, this is actually me. This is my um, poetry shows up here because uh, that's the section that I bought the most of in, um, at Literati. Um, and when I come over here and it says, hi, John, these are my purchases um, from Literati. But, but I'm jumping ahead. So, <laughs> uh, so it's store branded um, and you know, including the ability to have your logo and ability to have, uh, again, that splash there. Um, login capabilities. So um, part of the benefit of this is when we send that person, your customer, or when you send your customer an email, it knows who they are. So when they click into this, um, it, it knows them. But obviously as they start doing things like um, writing reviews or tracking their purchases or their rewards, we need to know that that it's them um, because they could forward it. So there will be a login, um, and just this is just kind of you know in modern parlance. If they if you've seen this before, they can log in using their Facebook account or or their uh, Twitter account. They don't need to, but they can. So it's so it's very easy for them to get in there um, and and start playing around in a secure way. Um, I mentioned kind of in the beginning and what drove us to this initially was just to be able to refine their recommendation inputs. So um, this is actually the page there that links from that email right away where they can just come in and they can say, what are their favorite books? So, um, or, and what are their favorite shelves in the store? So these are two books that I love that I bought long before um, I lived in Ann Arbor and was a literati customer, but, um, but it could be, 
useful uh, for the store to know that crossing to safety is one of my favorites for um, for the recommendations that they're going to make. And same things for the shelves. So I can I can say, hey, here's my my favorite section of your store, and that informs both what shows up here um, and in terms of those recommendations that we were looking at before. Um, browsing by store section. So I touched on this before. Is when I come to the page. Um, the first section that shows up is the section that I bought the most in, um, and I believe this is this is basically recently published. Um, but I could jump into poetry, um, and I can see coming soon. So this would be pre-order stuff. I can see new and trending, and right now I'm just scrolling with my finger here. Um, still selling well. I think we need a better name for that one. Um, and staff picks um, can be here. So. And all of this is populated without you doing anything because we're pulling from your tree line analytics data. So this is these lists are based on the titles that you're ordering the most of in poetry um, and the titles that are selling the best. Uh, so I can also come over here and just see some more detail on, you know, the second section that I bought the most on is bio memoir, poli sci, um, and then European history. Um, and then we can do neat things like, oh, here are the staff picks by shelf. Uh, so the most in terms of fiction, um, and then be able to browse to the to the shelves where, and we haven't done this yet for this store, is you can actually edit these and say which shelves you want to show up and which ones you don't, all that kind of good stuff. Um, yeah, um, staff picks and events. So I was talking about that as, you know, because a lot of staff loads their reviews in Datalvice. We would encourage if you started using this for them to put in their avatars as well. Um, there's already a way to do that. And I can see here, um, here's what Carla has picked. And again, this is just populated just because Carla loads her reviews into Edelweiss. Um, the, the title view, um, again, some of this is just making this a more modern view, which, you know, we can do, we, we can have it look as nice as, as uh, on Amazon doesn't even look that nice, but Apple books or, um, so, you know, when you come in here, it's a large jacket cover. Um, I'll, I'll talk about kind of the e-commerce. There are two options is one, you can just link to indie commerce. Um, we're talking with indie commerce about ways that we can work together on this, but it needs to be more one click, you, you know, on a phone, you need to have Apple pay where a customer could buy it and not even have to put in any information. They buy it based on the credit card in their wallet on their phone. Um, but certainly, you know, adding to wish lists. Um, again, we can do little shelf talkers here because of uh, this information that we have, as well as linking to the Edelweiss ABA community. So 17 other indie booksellers have reviewed this, and this has just been kind of cool for me just going through this and browsing the titles because I can see here's, you know, again, just pre-populated in here. Here's what other indie booksellers are saying about this. And then, you know, just some more things like more books like this, top sellers on the shame shelf, that type of thing. Um, are we doing on time? Okay. Tracking rewards progress. I mean, this was one of those where just as we've been talking to stores, ways of adding value to here and making this something that's sticky rather than, again, just something that is available for people to go to. Um, but there's no reason why we couldn't have, we're getting this information in from the point of sale providers who are who are tracking this information. And, and we know there are different way, different types of rewards. And so that's one of the things that we're working on is building those in here. But you know, here's where you are in progress towards whatever your program might be. Um, and there are a lot of different ones for indies out there. Um, I talked about some of the community stuff, being able to rate and review. So if I bought a book, which I did, uh, this my daughter read D-Day Girls, um, I can come in here and the customer can rate it or review it. Um, and, and we really think that this could be a neat way of building an additional community out there and letting your customers see um, you know, what other customers have, have looked at as well as you being able to make better recommendations to customers that are, that are using this system in this way. Um, and I mentioned the shelf staff talkers. So, um, so again, this, this part, um, is we're really excited about. We think it, there's a natural tie-in at some level. It has to be there for the, for the email program. Um, but it will uh, continue to evolve over time. 
Um, I'm going to go back now and talk a little bit about, in fact, speaking of that, they, what we beta tested um, was the bookstore interface. So this was the email campaigns that I showed you first. Um, and, and Chris Morrow at Northshire was nice enough. He was actually at the Winter Institute presentation as well. These are numbers from his store. Um, and uh, he sent out four campaigns. Um, so those were those, well, I'll show you what they were, but those cookbook-like things. Um, in total, based on the conversions and halos, and you know, we, we or the system can't take credit for all those. This was before the holidays. Certainly some of those would be generated anyway, but these were emails that went out um, and there were 124 conversions, which means people who had specific titles recommended to them and they bought them either online or in the store. Um, and 498 halos. So when those people bought the 124 conversions, they also bought another 498 titles. Um, at retail, um, and actually we can get the, the net numbers and we're building that in now, but at retail that was $4,200 for the conversions um, and $9,600 for the halo um, titles. Here are the campaigns themselves. So they did kind of an interesting mix of different kinds of campaigns, which I think was neat. So the first one was a newly arrived history. So this actually was probably the, the, the purest um, kind of genre themed campaign um, where it was eight newly arrived history titles that were sent to 953 customers. And again, it was probably 953 because these were people who bought in their history section in some time frame. 41% um, open rate, which was the best of, of their campaigns, uh, you know, very good. And, and to me, sort of even compared to some of these other ones like the New York Times, it's probably because you, you, they targeted the people who liked history. And so the open rate was a little higher. 13% um, click rate, 43% conversion rate. Um, and they made uh, 1,075. So part of showing this is, you know, and, and we, we worked through this and, you know, some of it was, learning things as we go we you know they we originally had the button for the email as buy and we changed it to learn more so there were things that we learned but one is you know these are some nice results and also this is the kind of information that you have on every one so you can gauge the success of different campaigns and what worked well and what didn't so the second one was a new york time top 10 new york times where i think they basically sent this out to a, a group of people who bought fiction and biography and a number of of other kind of big um big sections um and that actually was the highest grossing 5800 um a little bit lower open rate but a higher relative click rate and still a lot converted holiday staff picks um, and then this was kind of a neat one, and this is the one that Chris talked about, is this was a signed edition of Becoming. So the store got, or they have two stores, and so they got um, four copies at the Saratoga store and four, four copies at the Manchester store. They'd sold one before, um, uh, before the campaign. They'd had them for a month, and this is from Chris saying this is within two days after sending this out, they'd sold all of the other ones um, to the people that they were sent to. So even though this is the lowest grossing one um, and the, the, it, it was in a way the most impactful and I think it just kind of gets to um, different kinds of campaigns you can run you know so you can again you can run sort of a big New York Times one or um, if there's a signed edition that you want to push out there where you think certain certain people will be interested or there's a an event um, which is targeted you can send that out without having to worry about sending it to people who, you know, probably will have no interest in that campaign. Um, that uh, that's what I have. Um, <laughs> I don't know, Sarah. I'll ask if there are any questions, sort of that are uh, that are yeah. that are, have been asked. But but just before we get to that. Um, we are looking for more beta testers. Um, if you are an analytics customer um, and want a beta test, it, it will work better. I mean, if you, I think we're eventually going to want to help stores expand their mailing lists, um, but probably not as part of the beta. So I would think if you want to be part of the beta, you should have some portion of your customers that you know who they are and what their transactions are. 
Um, but if you do this kind of cool thing where you text 22828, um, that's the address, and you type Edelweiss 360, that will let us know you're interested. We'll send you a follow-up email and say, do you just want to be kept up to date on what's happening, or do you want to participate in the beta? Um, that's kind of our, I think it worked pretty well from Winter Institute and the, the approach um, that we're going with. All right, John, we, I've been answering quite a few questions as they've come in, and I saw just a couple more came in, and I will address those. If you have questions, you can always reach out to us. But there's one I thought that um, you didn't go into too much depth, but you and I have talked about, and someone asked, um, was really excited about the potential for indies to partner with publishers sort of as a channel. And they were curious kind of how your discussions with publishers have gone so far. And I know you've been out to New York several times to meet with publishers, and I wonder if you can just kind of share what that's been like. Yeah. Um... Uh, it's it's varied a little bit by publisher, but in general, there's a lot of excitement, um, and uh, and I think that's because I, I do think the big publishers and the small mid-sized publishers want the indies to succeed. I think not having a central place to work with indies, a, a central technology, is a challenge for that, um, and there's only so much they can do on discount, <laughs> um, and so. I think both in terms of seeing this as uh, as a way to, um, you know, part of it is how do we do that? You know, they want to push the titles they want to push to. We They can't through this system just say, we're sending our best cookbooks to your customers, but what's the best way for us to, to, to incent or motivate the stores or let them know? And so, um, we've had some really good discussions with with uh, with some of the publishing houses. Harper's been really great in their consumer marketing to to kind of be creative about a, an affiliate fee and and how that would all work. Um, and then I think that the second level of where we've really just started to talk is: Are there other ways that 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 publishers can um, can work with indies through their syst through this system to offer some of the kind of rebates and promotions that are offered to the big chains and uh, but 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 can't be offered to the indies because uh, because again there's not a central technology just to just to work in to handle the logistics of it. Um, some of the concerns from some of the publishers are: Will enough stores use it? Um, you know, can you make it easy enough? Which you know obviously is our concern and part of why we're I mean why we're trying to make the experience as easy as possible. Um, but, you know, if there's a critical mass, I mean, from the, I'm trying to, I think we've got the, the data in here on customers for nine or 10 beta stores, and that's 123,000 emails. So what we've been saying to the publishers is, you know, the, the volumes there, these are great customers. The indie customers are who you want to reach through the booksellers. Um, and the key is, you know, can we can we make it something that's a value for both? So that's um, that's one thing. And then um, the other concern that some of the publishers have raised is, is the purchase experience right now through the various e-commerce sites good enough? Um, and so that's where we do feel like we need to work with indie commerce and and other e-commerce systems to to get to more of that. Um, one click kind of experience so that you're not driving people. Uh, you, you have this great experience and then you're giving them an excuse to go somewhere else to buy it. Um, so I don't know whether that's helpful. <laughs> I think that does it. Um, thank you everybody for the very active Q and A. We had some good discussion and uh, John, you covered a lot today. I know it's a lot to take in. We are gonna send out the recording of today's session. A couple people asked about that. They wanted to forward it to someone else on their team. So I'll get that out as soon as I can load it. Uh, we'll get that out tonight or tomorrow, so keep an eye out for that. And if you have any questions, you can you can reach us at support at above the tree lane .com, And uh, we look forward to talking to many of you in more depth about Edelweiss 360. Thanks, John. Yep. Thanks, everyone.